Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Marion Pianos channel. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we are continuing our three-part series where we're looking at 10 of the top piano VSTs side by side. It's a top to bottom comparison. We've already done parts one and two, so if you'd like to start from the beginning, please click those links in the description. Otherwise, welcome to part three, where we're gonna look at the last four in the series. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, we would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button. We are constantly exploring all things to do with acoustic pianos, digital pianos, and even software, and of course, all points in between. So we'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and become a regular viewer. Also, remember to hit the notification bell so that you will be reminded every time we come out with a new video. And we are always constantly coming out with new content. So without further ado, let's finish this three-part series off on 10 of the top piano VSTs of today. Now, Noir is an interesting beast because yes, it's a piano VST, but it's a piano VST that is I guess the whole point of this VST isn't necessarily to present clean, unadulterated acoustic piano sound. It's it's almost kind of the opposite. It is uh, going for uh, really trying to simulate the sound that a German composer, and again, forgive the pronunciation, but I, Nils Fromm, I hope I'm saying that right again. Um, I've checked him out uh, because of this plugin actually. And he's just this beautiful uh, kind of soundscapey type composer. Uh, and he's innovated a lot of textures that combine digital piano or electric pianos, acoustic pianos, digital pianos. Uh, and this plugin uh, is a kind of a tribute or a capture of the range of textures that he is known to use in his recordings and his live performances. And it's really cool. It combines a particle generator um, there's all kinds of other uh, effects, transient effects and, you know, noise effects and distortion effects and it's just cool. It's, it's just really, really, really cool. I have uh, supremely enjoyed using this. Again, it's a use case. Would I go to Noir uh, if I was looking for just a, a very, very clean, detailed acoustic piano sound? Probably not. Uh, it doesn't have the sharpest bite or tack is not going to cut very well, even in its plainest of settings. Um, but for writing, uh, for tracking, for producing all kinds of things, oh my goodness, this is becoming a go-to for sure. So let's just give you a sample of what this is about. So lush, dark, all kinds of cool stuff going on there. Um.
called emotional. Wide open, snooze, smooth and deep. But before we move on, really need to give you uh, a taste of the particle generator because this is kind of, well, not kind of cool. This is very cool. So tons of interesting textured, moving, particle-y stuff. So that's Noir. Very moody, very vibey. Uh, and if you're trying to get your ear into a very different place, particularly one uh, that is generally in the neighborhood of melancholy, poof, the aptly named Noir. You'll love it. Coming down to our last three, Piano Tech. Just a giant in the space. And also completely unique in how this plugin delivers sound. So we'll start there. Piano Tech is a modeling engine. It is not a sample engine, and that makes it completely distinct of all of the other nine that we have looked at here. Uh, this is a very sophisticated computer model that uh, the guys over at Modart have been working on for years. Uh, and it allow because they've uh, developed the engine and it's a very it's a multifaceted engine and they've decided uh, that uh, as a part of the experience of using the plugin, they open up all of the parameters for editing to the user. So you can really literally uh, modify and build and construct your perfect piano as though you were actually working with a technician on one of those pianos. You can adjust the voicing uh, to uh, an insane level of detail, uh, the harmonic profile uh, right up to the from the first to the seventh partial, um, which you'll kind of see right here. You've got the soundboard design, the you know impedance cutoff, the bloom. Um, your output, your velocity curve, your action, mallet bounce, you've got your EQ, your effects, and then not to be forgotten at all, the ability to completely build out a custom uh, mic placement simulation as well. It's uh, absurdly awesome. And you buy this in three different packs. You can get the basic, you can get the standard and the pro. Uh, this is the standard, which gives you, uh, uh, you know, uh, to me that's kind of the sweet spot, but there are some people who will need the pro. I think most users will be fine with the standard. And you, then you buy instrument packs that go on top of that. So what we have here is we've done the Steinway D New York and the Hamburg, um, the C Beckstein 282, uh, which is, Certainly a favorite of mine. I really like that piano. Um, the Yamaha C5 and the U4. Uh, but I think the Hamburg D and the uh, Beckstein and some of the Rhodes are certainly uh, amongst my favorites. So I'll just give you a sense of what this sounds like.
So certainly capable of all of the same textures and nuances that a lot of these uh, samples uh, come up with. Uh, cinematic is also very nice. Yeah, if you're somebody who knows that you love mucking with settings, even if you wind up supplementing this with another plugin, Piano Tech is, is the plugin for you. Like there's an endless, literally an endless uh, amount of possibilities that you can draw out of this plugin. Um, one of the criticisms, and I'm amongst those that have criticize this at times is that it's sometimes too perfect. So they have this little bar down here condition that will uh, sort of generally um, auto automatically um, modify a whole range of settings to age the piano. Now that's extreme but definitely not going with mint something you know there can make it seem a little more lifelike. Uh, even still, some of these sample banks that we've been listening to um, capture certain nuances which um, are so subtle and in some cases so derived from imperfections in either the room they've been recorded in or the individual instruments themselves that there is a, a certain level of authenticity that some of these sample bakes manage to capture if it's the kind of nuance that you're looking for. Um, but for an engine that is capable of producing 98% of every possible piano experience that you could hope for in a very convincing way, hard to argue that Piano Tech is not that plug-in. So lots to like with Piano Tech. Now we come to Ravenscroft. 275. Now the Ravenscroft piano, this is actually a real piano. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with the Ravenscroft acoustic piano. It is uh, a very limited edition. In some, in a lot of ways, many people don't even consider it to be a part of the piano industry because they don't even have a dealer network. There's no regular levels of production. It's mega boutique. Boutique, boutique, boutique. But also one of the most stunning instruments you will ever play if you have a chance to do so. Um, I made the comment on my Ravenscroft review that I had a chance to play the Ravenscroft 275 along with its plug-in um, at NAM 2016, I believe, and many other people on this channel, it sounds like, had the same experience as me. It was just a jaw-dropping experience. The piano itself as well as what they had set up uh, at the booth right beside it, which was this Ravenscroft, and it was being driven by uh, Raven Works uh, controller, which really is just a reworked Kawhi VPC-1, an excellent controller by the way. Uh, so the Ravenscroft 275, uh, in a very similar way uh, to many of the other ones, gives you four different uh, sample captures and the ability to mix them independent of one another. So yes, there are individual, but the 275 at the top gives you the option to have all four. So it depends on your machine, whether it can handle it, uh, but if you can, this is the most uh, fun. You do have the option to have some tuning and some velocity curve, but really it's all on one screen, which is somewhat unique. Very few of the plugins have all of their settings available from a single screen, um, so they do and they don't uh, overwhelm you with 
too many options, but it is a nice balance of options. Uh, you've got a reverb option down there. Uh, you've got some pedal uh, resonance options and sympathetic resonance options in the left. Uh, a lot of other uh, release volume, pedal noise, stereo width, all this kind of stuff. But most of the time, you're going to be playing with this middle section right here where you've got the option of turning on either close miking, which is you know right inside the piano, your player miking, which is usually right about here. Then you've got a room mic, which, I don't know, Depends on the engineer, but that could be anywhere from like, you know, six to 12, 15 feet away. Um, and then you've got the side, which picks up a lot of very nice cabinet resonance that sometimes um, you don't have the option to do in a stereo, but it really is something that you pick up as a listener, uh, listening to a piano fairly close by. And so you can mix and match all of these. So this is what the close sounds like. clean, clear sound. So let's load up the player. So this is now the player perspective. Now this with headphones on is magic. It's not the only plugin that has that player perspective available, but there's something about the piano itself that outputs tone to the player on that grand in a very specific way. So, for anyone who's had the pleasure of sitting behind a Ravenscroft, the real thing, hearing this captured in such a, an authentic way is startling. And then you've got room mics, side mics, and you can load all of these up simultaneously and turn them all on. Now there's a good chance you wouldn't want them all on at the same time and you'd probably do something like this. It would be up to you. So there's the Ravenscroft 275. So we come to VSL, which is the last in the line, but really uh, only because we're doing this in alphabetical order. I will say I really enjoyed this plugin as well. This was definitely one of my favorites. Um, this uh, really gives you the sense that you are in a recording studio capturing a very real piano in a very real space. There is something about uh, this, this sheer level of detail that they have crammed into this that creates that illusion um, in a much more convincing way than some of the other ones do. Now, like I said, that doesn't necessarily make it automatically a better choice or a poor choice for people because that might not matter to somebody who wants a quick piano track. But if you want to feel that uh, kind of the electricity of being in a real recording space and that, that energy that you feel when you're truly behind a nine foot piano, uh, the Vienna Symphonic Libraries have nailed that uh, to a T. Uh, there are a few windows that you get with their Synchron Pianos engine. Um, and 
they've laid it out in a way that to me makes a lot of sense. They sort of give you what they consider the most go-to edits in nice big dials along the left. They give you the option of uh, some e easy to grab presets along the bottom. Uh, and then a few of the other edits along the right side that you're likely uh, to muck with. Uh, do you want pedal noise in there, half pedal, you know, your MIDI sensitivity, uh, plus or minus, your attack, timbre shift if you want to muck with the tone a little bit, your sympathetic resonance, your uh, body resonance. But a lot of the fun is going to come in your mixing window. And this is where you see uh, how many different channels you've got. And there's two different levels you can get. Um, in the level we got, we get, uh, what is this, five different uh, captures. And a lot of these are stereo, so it's not five channels. You're in, in most of these cases, you're getting uh, two or three mics per channel. Um, so it's at least uh, nine or 10 uh, mic sources that you're getting. Uh, with kind of the standard version without going to the super duper duper version. Uh, you've got room mix, you've got close, um, you've got mid, and then you've got this kind of deca tree, the main center and then the main if you want to turn that on as well. They have presets arranged over here. So if you just want these three channels, room mix, close and mid, this is all represented here in your room mix presets. Uh, concert center room mix, player room mix, intimate room mix. Let's see what this sounds like. Here it's gotten rid of my touch curve. You're just hitting those top velocities too easily. Ah, there we go. Now these presets are only pulling up different uh, settings for this window and, and this window. You don't have to use those presets. You can just turn these on and start mixing and matching as you would. And you can get some truly Now the thing with the Synchron pianos is that you really need to research which piano you want because it's not cheap to buy any of them. It's not like you get the plug-in for a certain price and then the add-on instruments are relatively low. No. Every single one of these pianos is hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And so you wind up having to watch through a lot of reviews just like this or on their website, which does provide uh, some great examples, but it's a little different than just getting in there and mucking with it. So I get that this is a huge project. They've had to spend quite a bit of money on engineers and captured time, studio time, pianos, all of that kind of stuff. I just wish there was a way to kind of try out some of these instruments before you had to commit to one or the other. That might probably be literally my only complaint about this whole thing because everything else about it really does place you uh, in the magic of a nine foot studio recording setting. Uh, I think in a way that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the other ones, um, it's either eluded them or it just wasn't something that they were going for. Because like I said, uh, you don't necessarily want that out of a uh, plug-in. Sometimes you want to feel like you're sitting down at a real piano in a nice intimate space and you're just playing. You're not having to feel like you're in an intimidating larger space. So you know, each one has uh, their strengths uh, and each one has a few weaknesses here and there. 
Anyway, we have reached the end of our list. Really appreciate you sitting through and watching and hopefully enjoying um, a slightly longer video, but one that uh, you know walks through our whole adventure into piano VSTs. Um, it is a world that is uh, just captured my imagination and changed, to be honest, how I uh, write and how I enjoy playing piano at home. Um, I've got several digital pianos, but if I'm in the studio space and I'm just wanting to do a little bit of writing rather than just playing for fun, I call up these VSTs because it just takes my ear uh, to a place so quickly and so authentically uh, that I'm finding it really useful for that. It's, it's, it's been quite uh, an adventure. Anyway, if you have not subscribed and you really liked what you saw or you enjoyed it, um, please hit subscribe and the notification bell because we'd love to have you back for more videos in the future. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube and have yourselves a great day.